on today's Apple Daily. ARM V9 coming to Apple A15 and M2. Siri gets new voices and Apple TV's getting a new remote. Then I'm answering your iCave Answers questions about AMD going to ARM, iPhone 13 colors, iPad 10, Tim Cook retiring, and what MacBook to get right now. So let's go. I'm Mike Cave David. Every weekday at 12 UTC, we give you the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors, simplifying Apple so that everything just works for you. If you want some of that, then subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss a thing. ARM has announced their V9 architecture, the first major update to the architecture in a decade. ARM V6 was the instruction set used in the original iPhone. ARM V7 was the last 32-bit version that was abandoned after the iPhone 5, with 64-bit ARM 8 taking over from the 5S onwards. In terms of what ARM V9 means in broad terms, it's about faster performance, better AI performance, and security. While Samsung, Xiaomi, Oppo and Google have all given testimonials on how awesome ARM V9 is, Apple has of course stayed quiet. Apple has a different relationship with ARM to much of the rest of the industry however, as they were one of the original co-founders of ARM along with Acorn Computers and VLSI. And as such they may have already had development access to the architecture before the competition, although we can't confirm this. ARM V9 is focused on machine learning but it will also benefit general purpose computing, AR, VR and 5G. And we're already aware of Apple's interest in augmented reality and virtual reality, as well as how real 5G got just last year. Today, we're bringing 5G to iPhone. 5G, 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 5G. CPU performance could improve by over 30% on ARM V9, and all existing software should run perfectly without modification, as the standard is fully backward compatible, which, given the current performance of Apple's processors right now, sounds pretty awesome. Although it does mean we might have to do some maths again. Siri gets new voices. The latest iOS 14.5 beta has introduced new voices for Siri, as well as a choice of voice, oh that rhymes, when you set up a new iPhone. Gone are the names for the Siri voices, just numbered versions for each accent, though even the accents are now called varieties. As well as the two new English speaking voices, Apple has improved all of the natural sounding voice synthesis in the English speaking voices, as well as Russia and Italy. Apple says, we are excited to introduce two new Siri voices for English speakers and the option for Siri users to select the voice they want when they set up their device. This is a continuation of Apple's long-standing commitment to diversity and inclusion and products and services that are designed to better reflect the diversity of the world we live in. Let me know your thoughts on the new voices down in the comments. Apple TV remote with new center button. TVOS 15.5 has turned up some references to pressing the touch surface or the center button on the Apple TV remote in the setup segment of the code, prompting more excitement about that new Apple TV we're all waiting for. Now John Prosser has mentioned having seen these packaged up in dusty packaging, which means they've been ready for a while. Although if that's the case, then we're unlikely to have super modern chips inside based on the A14 architecture, so maybe the A12X or A12Z rumor is true. Now it should be pointed out that the previous Apple TV remote before the Siri remote version did have an aluminium body and did have a center button. Though the Apple TV that came with it doesn't run tvOS or at least the latest version of tvOS but I don't think it was even tvOS at all so it seems pretty unlikely that that's what we're talking about here. Perhaps we'll be seeing something looking a bit more like the design of that aluminium remote though with the physical d-pad control rather than the touch surface with the upcoming version of Apple TV. There are also thoughts though that the next Apple TV could have much more of a gaming focus, but that remains to be seen. Now before I get into iCave answers, I know we have a lot of new people here and a lot of new subscribers. So if you haven't done it yet, if you hit the notification bell and post up hashtag notification squad down in the comments, you will be eligible for a shout out at the end of our next video. So join our notification squad and use the hashtag down in the comments. But let's get into your questions. Rabbit Cyber asks, do you think that other companies such as AMD would abandon X64 in favor of ARM after the success of Apple's M1? So I think your premise here is slightly flawed, but uh, there's definitely some truth to it. I definitely think that AMD is interested in ARM because of the performance that everyone can quite clearly see with M1, and it's only going to get better from here as we get into M1X and beyond. If only someone had made a video with that name. But I think the uh, the flaw that you've made there is abandon x86 in favor of ARM. Now, they might do down the line, but I think in the near term at least, it's far more likely that they might uh, produce both. There's no reason that AMD couldn't produce x86 chips and ARM64 chips, uh, which makes a lot more sense for them in terms of transitions. 
It also gives the PC industry a lot more time, Microsoft to work out what they're going to do in terms of licensing, Windows on ARM and things like that, because it's not something that they can just do overnight. They can't just stop making x86 chips and assume that the kind of ecosystem is there and ready for ARM. The reason that it worked for Apple is because obviously they were able to uh, create their own software ready to fit with the ARM processors that they were going to be transitioning to, whereas AMD doesn't have control over the software side of things. As well as that, right now, Microsoft doesn't license Windows on ARM for anything other than their own hardware. That would need to be something that gets uh, addressed first, although I think if you're doing OEMs, it probably is okay at this point. I'm not a licensing lawyer, but that would be uh, one of the issues for me. But I do think that AMD has a big opportunity to go and make some uh, awesome ARM chips and give people more of that choice so that they can decide whether they want the x86 that we are with right now or if they want to move over to the ARM versions of stuff to get the benefits that that comes with, but also the short-term drawbacks of some uh, software compatibility issues. TechHyped asks, congratulations on 6K first of all, and now so as you know there are leaks out about new colors coming to iPhone 13 series. So what are your thoughts on those colors, and do you like them? So yes, what we've been seeing so far in terms of color uh, reports coming out of, I guess the supply chain, has been a matte black, which MKBHD, for one, will be very pleased about. Uh, and also an orange that kind of looks kind of coppery because obviously it's uh, it's metallic. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I think the matte black would be awesome if that comes to the Pro Series, which I think is uh, the way that it's looking at the moment. It's the matte black will replace the kind of uh, graphite that we have in the range right now, which is what I've got. I think the graphite looks amazing, though. I, I'd, I'd be upset if that disappeared. Um, and then the orange, I'm guessing, is the one that would be looking to come to the main iPhone range. I don't know if that's going to the stainless steel range or if that's going to the main aluminium range, but we will see. The orange looks really cool. It's like a sunset orange kind of look to it rather than more of a metallic copper for me from the renders that we've seen. But obviously these are just kind of um, what people have come up with themselves in order to illustrate the colours that they've been told about. So... Whether we see them looking like that or not, I don't know. For me personally, I think a product red in the pros would look awesome. Stainless red would look absolutely stunning. And that's probably what I would buy if it was there. Joe asks, what are you expecting for the iPad? 10th generation? So we've uh, addressed this in the past. We've had some rumors already coming out of the supply chain, which looks like the uh, the next generation of iPad nothing, the like base level iPad, the one that's currently $329. Um, is looking to basically take on the original form of the iPad Air 3, which is basically uh, a slightly larger display. So we're going up from 10.2 to 10.5 inches. We are going to a slightly thinner chassis. Um, the iPad Air 3, I think, had the A12 processor in there before they jumped to the A14 for the current iPad Air 4. Um, but it looks like this might be taking on an A13 processor, which would be even better. It means we'd also get a laminated display most likely because that's what's currently there in that production line. And it probably doesn't make sense for Apple to kind of strip out that chunk of the production line, especially if they are going to the 10.5 inch displays, uh, just to put in a not laminated one to differentiate it. Apple wants to push the best features forward and forward and forward. That's how all of the teams work over in Apple. They're always trying to fit as many of the better features in at the price point that they're aiming for as they can, which then puts pressure on the higher level products. So they're not going to be holding back a laminated display purely to kind of differentiate the higher level products. They're going to be trying to push that laminated display as cheap as they can so that the higher level products have to innovate and get to a better place. And as right now we're looking at mini LED displays becoming a real thing, um, that would be a differentiation at the top, so it wouldn't worry anyone about cannibalizing at the bottom. So I think that might be what we're looking at. Uh, there's also been rumors that it would come down to $300 instead of $329, which would be awesome. That's 10% off. And then that means that the student version would go even cheaper, so maybe $279, which is a very compelling option for a lot of people. Joe asks, do you see Tim Cook, Apple CEO, retiring anytime soon? Now, while Tim is uh, an older gentleman, he is definitely not uh, struggling in any way. 
Uh, he is one of the probably one of the most fit people uh, in his age group in the world. He's very, very uh, passionate about fitness, and this has kind of been reflected in what Apple's been doing with Apple Watch over the past few years. So I don't think he would have any problems of wanting to retire on medical grounds. Like, he's got all the money in the world. It's not like he would need to work anymore. But I think he's got passion for the products. I don't think he's particularly considering retiring at this point. Um, unless he retires to go into something like politics or philanthropy. I can see that Tim Cook is the kind of guy that kind of wants to make his dent in the universe, not necessarily just through Apple, but also through social change and kind of the programs that he's been doing over the past few years. But I feel like while he's doing it at Apple, he's got more opportunity to make a difference than he might do on his own. Could we see him as a presidential candidate at some point? Um it would be a pretty compelling option to have the uh, CEO of the world's most valuable company wanting to do that, if that's something that he wants to do. In terms of who would replace him, it would probably be his COO, Jeff... What's his name? We need to <clears throat> have a look at Apple's corporate page. Okay, so uh, right now we have uh, Tim Cook as CEO, Catherine Adams as Senior Vice President and General Counsel, so that's uh, the legal side of things, Eddie Q, Senior Vice President of Internet Software Services, Craig Federici as Senior Vice President of Software Engineering, uh, John Giorandria, John Giorandria as Senior Vice President of Machine Learning and AI Strategy, Greg Joswiak, uh, Jos, who has taken over Phil Schiller's role in Worldwide Marketing, Sabi Khan as Senior Vice President of Operations, Luca Mastri as Senior Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. Uh, oh, we've got a financials call coming up very soon as well. Uh, Deirdre O'Brien, Senior Vice President of Retail and People. Um, I believe she was the one that introduced all the sleep tracking stuff. Uh, Dan Riccio, Senior Vice President of Hardware Engineering. Johnny Saruji as uh, Senior Vice President of Hardware Tech and... Jeff Williams, uh, Chief Operating Officer. So Jeff Williams is probably the guy who is uh, best suited to kind of step into a role like that. Craig Frederiki is probably the one that we would expect more likely to be kind of the face of more Apple events if that's what happens. But yeah, Craig Frederiki is probably the kind of people's choice, but Jeff Williams is more than likely the guy that's actually being groomed for that position if it is coming up anytime soon. And into our final question. Suresh K asks, Apple is too complicated at this point. I can't wait for the new MacBooks with 32 GB anymore. I have a late 2013 MBP 15 inches retina with 2.6 GHz, quad core Intel Core i7, 16 GB, 1600 MHz, DDR3, 512 GB SSD, and also GeForce GT 750M 2 GB. It's working fine, but not enough for VFX and animation production. Battery is completely gone. I heard RAM and SSD wear out in 10 years. If I replace the RAM battery and SSD with more storage, would it make it a bit faster and stable until the 32 GB M1 M1X comes out? Or should I just invest in a M1 16 GB MacBook right now and take a 50-60% loss when trading in for M1X? Budget is tight. Thank you for everything. Okay. Um, so a lot of stuff there. Obviously, you are using a 2013 laptop right now, which you're kind of trying to pimp out a little bit. Um, but for VFX, yeah, you're right. You do need a lot more power than that. What I would personally say is that if you were to pick up a MacBook Pro right now, you are not going to take a 50 to 60% loss when you trade it in for an M1X, unless you literally like trade it back in with Apple, maybe. Um, they don't do a great uh, deal on the trade-ins. What I would probably suggest for you at this point, if you need to go down the M1 route straight away, uh, is I would go for the base level, but with the 16 gigabytes of RAM. So just go for the 256 gigs of storage and get external storage for your extras, maybe an M.2 external drive, um, which will be pretty quick uh, and probably certainly quick enough for what you actually need in terms of uh, editing and that kind of thing and doing VFX work. What I would say though is do not sink another penny into your current uh, Intel MacBook. You will not get a good return on uprating that. What you could probably do though is sell it for a, with what you've got there, I would probably replace the battery and then look at selling it because no, your SSD and your RAM has not worn out. That's not a thing. Um, the SSD 
over a long, long period of time might start to work less well, you're not getting close to that. I would almost guarantee that that, uh, that SSD has probably got another 20 years in it. So I wouldn't worry about that side of it. I would probably look at either a base level MacBook Air with 16 gigabytes of RAM. I don't think you're even going to need to have the fan for the vast majority of what you're doing. Uh, and then you will be able to trade that in with much less of a loss, maybe $200, um, two to $300 as a loss on that. If you then want to trade up to an M1X, Apple stuff does not lose value very quickly. Like you can still sell a 2012 MacBook Pro for like $350 now. A six month to a year old M1 is going to be still probably losing maybe 20 to 30%. Uh, that would be my guess. Uh, if you really want to minimize your losses, I would go for the Mac Mini because, again, lower price in the first point. You're going to lose less uh, in terms of depreciation in the short term. So that would be my suggestion. Uh, guys, if you have a better suggestion down in the comments, uh, let me know. Now, I actually think if you were to sell your MacBook Pro as it is right now with just the replaced battery, you would probably almost be able to fund that Mac Mini straight off the bat. So thank you guys for watching. If you want the uh, latest news, leaks and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, all you need to do, hit that subscribe button. Um, I'm anticipating we're not going to have a huge amount of news over the weekend. So, because it's Easter uh, and everyone's going to be closed from tomorrow. So we we will still do shows. Um, but if you have got questions, let me know down in the comments. Hashtag iCaveAnswers and I'll be answering them. Thanks so much. See you later.